Hello, my name is Ryan Ashker and welcome to the Sports News on CW57, your home for local high school, collegiate and semi-pro sports. This week we visit with Madison East, Madison LaFollette and much more. It's the Sports News brought to you in part by the Red Zone. Now let's get you off the bench and into the game. Former standout for Wanakee, Will Decora has been added to the Wisconsin Badgers team roster as a walk-on and will immediately begin practice for the upcoming season. Decora served as a team manager for the men's basketball team over the past two seasons. As a Warrior, Decora was a three-year letter winner on the court while also playing football. He helped Wanakee to the Badger Conference Championship all three seasons. He was also a two-time all-conference selection in basketball and was a part of two state championships in football while playing quarterback and defensive end. Democratic State Senator Fred Risser of Madison has drawn up a pair of bills that would ban hunting and limit the types of equipment trappers could use in state parks. The senator says park visitors shouldn't have to worry about being shot and trapping is inhumane. One bill would ban hunting in the parks completely, while the other would outlaw steel jaw traps, potty gripping wraps, and snares. This is in response to a bill Republicans passed in 2012 allowing hunting and trapping on state park properties. The statute allows the Department of Natural Resources to prohibit both practices within 100 yards of a designated area to protect public safety or a unique animal or plant. The Milwaukee Bucks have locked down big man John Henson on a four-year extension worth $44 million. The two sides agreed on the contract late last week that could reach $48 million with incentives. The 24-year-old Henson averaged seven rebounds, 4.7 points, and two blocks while averaging 18 minutes per game last season. The Bucks are said to value his defensive presence and that he brings in the paint, as well as his ability to guard multiple positions. This is just another move of the Bucks looking to keep their young athletic core intact. NASCAR driver Tony Stewart has announced that he will retire as a full-time driver after the 2016 campaign. This follows in the footsteps of Jeff Gordon, who is set to retire at the conclusion of this season. Stewart is a three-time NASCAR champion and is also co-owner of Stewart Haas Racing, which carries four full-time NASCAR teams. The 45-year-old known as Smoke has not won a race in over two years and has announced that driver Clint Boyer will take over the number 14 Chevrolet after next season. The Wisconsin Badgers were upset over the weekend against the visiting Iowa Hawkeyes for the Heartland Trophy, which is presented each season to the winner of the rivalry matchup. The Badgers came into the game ranked 19th in the country, but now sit at 3-2 overall and 0-1 in Big Ten play. The Hawkeyes defense forced Wisconsin to commit four turnovers, which proved to be the difference in the 10-6 final score. The Badgers are 5-4 since the introduction of the trophy in 2009, though the series dates back to 1946. The Milwaukee Bucks will be holding four Fear the Deer Nights in the 2015-2016 NBA season. This campaign features a black alternative uniform designed to go with the overall new look of the Bucks. Along with the black uniforms, the Bucks have also become the first NBA franchise to promote an alternative court. The secondary hardwood, hardwood will feature the Bucks Fear the Deer slogans and a unique black look. This promotion will make its debut on December 9th versus the LA Clippers. Keep in mind, CW57 is your home for local high school football action all season long. Join myself and Rich Reynolds this week as we head to Breeze Stevens Field to cover the Madison LaFollette Lancers as they take on the Madison East Pergolders in the Madison Bowl. Games air right here on CW57, Saturdays at 4 and Sundays at 1.30. We'll be back with more of the sports news in just a moment. Good enough for me. We do not. Hello and welcome back to the Sports News. Right now we're joined by our friends from Stoughton Volleyball, Hannah Hobson and Maggie Virag. Ladies, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. So talk to us a little bit about how this season is going so far. How are you guys doing? We recently played Oregon. Uh, we took them to four sets, lost the first one, but fought back for the next three. They're a good scrappy team, but we controlled our half of the court to take the W. What brings you guys together as a team? What are some of the team strengths that allow you to be competitive on the court? Our team chemistry is really good. We are a really tight group of girls on and off the court. And also our communication has really helped us get our successes. And I understand you guys have a little team mantra, sweat today, smile tomorrow. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and what it means to the team? Yeah, so that's our motto for our team uh, varsity poster. Uh, it means you don't earn anything without any hard work. So our success 
had a lot of determination put into it and we really set the bar high in the beginning of the season, which paid off um, throughout our wins. Now, what are some of your favorite memories or, or matches so far in the year as you guys are trying to make memories? What, what's a favorite memory that sticks out this season? Um, my favorite or best memory would probably be at the Janesville Invite when we played Jefferson the second time. Mm -hmm. It was a game full of energy and we had a lot of fun and it was just a good team win for us. Mine would probably have to be at our Middleton tournament. We took a win from Oregon and MG. Uh, those are both teams that are big conference rivals for us, so they were huge wins and really brought our team closer together. Now, what are your goals as a team for the rest of the season? What would you ladies like to accomplish? Um, well, we have two games this week. We play at SOC on Tuesday and at MG on Thursday, and we really want to come away with a win for both of those games. We've been working really hard, and we know what we got to do. And then we have our conference tournament on Saturday. Uh, at this point, really, it's anyone's game, but we're really going to give it our all to hopefully take the conference title. Well, fantastic. We want to wish you ladies the best of luck on the rest of your season. That is our friends from the Stoughton Volleyball team, Hannah Hobson and Maggie Virag. Ladies, thanks for joining us. We will see you with more of the sports news in just a moment. Hello and welcome back to the Sports News. Right now we're joined by Kali Schmoltz and Carly Pavich of the Verona Ladies Volleyball Team. Girls, thanks for joining us here today. Thank thanks you. Thanks for having us. So give us an update on the season. How are you doing so far? So, so far we are 4-0 in conference. And then at our two tournaments, at Richmond Center we placed first and then at Oshkosh we placed second. Oh, very impressive. Now, um, with those behind you and, and being undefeated in those, what are some of the important matchups coming up for the rest of the season or on the horizon for your club? Uh, well, we have some Prairie coming up, which is always a big rival. Yeah. Um, we have an Arrowhead tournament coming up, which a bunch of big competition is at. And we have our conference tournament, which is always interesting. Now, with a lot of these big tournaments and, and being away in the long kind of bus trips you have between some of them, what do you guys do as a team to kind of work together and be a cohesive unit? Um, well, we really think it's important to be bonded as a team mm -hmm. instead of as individuals. So we do a lot of things. Um, we recently had a practice just for bonding. Um, we had some relay races and we did this lip syncing contest where we broke off into teams and we picked a song that we dressed up to and sung with. <laughs> uh, it was very interesting and we bonded with the JV and freshmen as well. So we do a lot of things. Very nice. Now, you mentioned doing some things with the JV and the freshmen. You girls are also involved in doing events for some of the youth players in the Verona area. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, um, we actually uh, have youth night coming up, which is when the kids get in free and we also give out t-shirts. Um, in the summer, we have a three-day camp mm -hmm. where our returners break off into uh, coaching and we help out the little kids. We also have a uh, camp coming up this next Sunday, which is just a one day camp for the kids. Very nice. And I can imagine just talking to girls before we started filming today that you guys have a lot of fun with that Verona team. Can you give us an idea of maybe some of the more fun moments you've had this season? Um, I think the most fun moment I had was, like Carly said, the um, team bonding throughout the every level in the program. Mm -hmm. Um, it was fun to dress up and we all picked our own song and performed our lip sync battle to everyone. Um, another one of the, my most fun memories is Oshkosh where we stayed over and we had to bond with each other overnight and that was super fun as well. Very nice. Now, as far as the team's concerned on the court, what's the outlook for the rest of the season? What are some of the team goals? Um, I think um, just looking forward, uh, we're looking forward to our upcoming conference matches. Um, then our tournament, like Carly said again, on October 10th in Airhood, so that should be good competition. And then just continuing to work hard and get better in practice every day. Fantastic. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming on the Sports News today, and good luck with the rest of the season. Thank, thank you. you. That is Kali Schmaltz and Carly Favich of the Verona Ladies Volleyball Team. We'll be right back with more of the Sports News in just a moment.
Hello and welcome back to the Sports News. We're going to have a little bit of fun today as we're going to have two coaches come on at the same time. They're going to be battling for the city championship this upcoming Friday at Breeze Stevens Field. Kickoff at 7 o'clock. And it also just happens to be the CW57 Sports Game of the Week, the Madison Bowl, which you can see right here on CW57 Saturday at 4 or Sunday at 1.30. Joining us right now, we have Steve Arado of Madison East and Scott Swanson of Madison LaFollette. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for covering the game. So for some of our viewers that might not be up to date with how your teams are doing, can you give us an update on the season so far, respectively? Uh, right now, Madison East is 4-3. and three. Uh, Just got to win Friday against Beloit. Um, we stumbled the last couple weeks, um, but 4-3 and three overall. Um, better, than, better than where we've been in the past. We're pretty happy with where we are right now. The fallout we're sitting at uh, five and two. Um, just came off a tough loss against a very good Verona team. Um, we've clinched a playoff berth, but uh, still trying to get more. Okay, now talk a bit about your upcoming opponent. I know you guys aren't going to divulge too much sitting next to each other, but maybe some of the keys of the game and what's going to be able to help your teams come out with a W this Friday night. Uh, well, Follett's big, they're fast, they're physical, um, you know, they have really good offense, really good athletic quarterbacks, some playmakers on offense, and then defensively they're, they're, they're tough, they're big, and we've struggled in the past moving the ball on them, so we expect a, another defensive battle with them as well, because they, they play well, Scott does a great job with his program, so it'll be, it'll be tough, and hopefully we can play fast offensively and move the ball and keep the sticks moving and keep their offense off the field, that's our plan. Um, yeah, our plan is to try and do the same to them, to try and keep their offense off the field. Um, they obviously have a very dynamic offense, some great receivers, a good quarterback, uh, tough running back this year as well. Um, so offensively, we would like to be able to move the ball, be able to run the ball, um, you know, keep our defense fresh when they do uh, have to play. They got to get out there and, and they're ready to go. Now, Scott, I know you had to deal with homecoming festivities last week, being able to keep those kids uh, to be able to have fun yet because they are high school students, but also be prepared for the game. And Steve, that is a challenge you are facing this week as is homecoming for East. Can you guys share with us a little bit about how you're able to balance that between letting the students have fun and enjoy those festivities and also being ready for a big game coming up? Yeah, we, we've, we try to focus on uh, this week that, that the homecoming festivities are for the rest of the kid and for the rest of the students. And our, our main job was to, to play well on Friday night. Um, and at points we did. But overall, uh, we didn't really get the job done last week. Um, not necessarily saying it was because of the homecoming festivities, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it, it is. It's tough to keep everybody focused, uh, you know, for a five five day span, um, and end it with a with a great game on Friday. And, and we'll find out this week what the distractions are. We you know, we want our kids to obviously embrace homecoming, have fun with it. But at the same time, when school gets out, we have practice for a couple hours, and then we have you know the game on on Friday. You know, along with the pep rally and the parade, or whatever, whatever we're doing. But we got to remember what our job is this week, and that's to play well against the Fowler. Now, aside from being a conference game on Friday night, it's also very important for the city. It is the city championship game, and as I said, we're also going to be covering that for CW57. Can you tell us? What the city championship means for your teams, your programs, and the community? Well, for us, it's big. You know, it's you know, it's one of our goals every year too is try to win the city. We have never been in this position before since I've been here. You know, mm -hmm. to be two and zero in the city is big for us. But we always tell our kids about the history and tradition of Madison football and, and how strong it is with all of our programs now. And it's fun to be able to compete. You know, for the championship, it's really fun for us to compete against La Follette because we share the same side of town, which. We think our side of football is, is pretty good, both sides of La Follette and East, so it's, it's going to be fun going up against La Follette. Yeah, we talked day one about our, our first main goal is always to win the city. Um, we've been fortunate enough the last two years uh, to be able to do that, um, but it's, it's, we definitely have a, di a different challenge on, on Friday night. We haven't, uh, we've had the city championship clinched up at this time um, each of the past few years, um, and so we've got to come out ready to play on Friday. But uh, obviously it's a great thing for city football for so many teams to still be you know, in the hunt for the playoffs and in, in the hunt for the championship this late going in, uh, into the season. And as you guys mentioned, your side of town is playing some pretty good football. So I want to ask uh, Steve, if you can give us kind of your thoughts on what Scott is doing over at La Follette and some of the things that program is doing very well, I'd like to hear that. Um, well, first of all, we have a ton of respect for Scott and, and the follow-up, what they do with their program. Um, very good defensively. They have been since I've been here in the last four years and watch them on tape. It hasn't changed. Um, and just what they do with their offense the last couple of years, 
uh, with Copus last year, now with uh, Julian Patton at quarterback. You know, they do some great things with some special athletes that they have, and, and it's just a credit to what kind of coaching staff they have and the kind of coach Scott is. And, you know, they're able to adjust with their personnel, and they're playing great football, and, and, and they're a great opponent. So we're, we're, we have a big challenge for us Friday. But a ton of respect for both Scott and his program, and, and hopefully we can play well on Friday and get the win. You know, Scott, I want to ask the same question of you about uh, Steve and his Madison East team. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I've told him this before, that we were in the same spot, you know, about five or six years ago. Um, and you don't go from a, a one-win season or a zero-win season to making the playoffs in, in one year. Um, and just the, the plan that they've put in place and, and to, to stick to it, to, to keep the coaching staff, you know, as much together as you can and to get the kids to buy in. Um, you know, they're obviously doing a great job to, to keep improving every year. And that is the city championship game that is coming up this Friday night at 7 o'clock. And that will be held at Bree Stevens Field. CW57 will be out there covering it. It will be the Madison Bowl for us. And you can see that right here on CW57 on Saturday at 4 or Sunday at 1.30. That is Steve Arado of Madison East and Scott Swanson of Madison La Folla. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. We'll be right back with more of the sports news in just a moment. Hello and welcome back to the sports news. The NFL season is underway and just a few weeks in. So a lot of those teams still are optimistic on making the playoffs and eventually up to the big game and we know our Packers are the same way. Our next guest is a Pro Football Hall of Famer. He was able to win the big game with the greatest show on turf, the St. Louis Rams back in 2000, is currently a commentator with the NFL Network. He's here this week to talk to us a little bit about winning the ever-important Fantasy Football League. Marshall Falk, thanks for joining us here on the Sports News. How are you doing today? I'm good, I'm good, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Excited you could be here. It's a, a great honor to be able to get to talk to you. Seeing we are talking about fantasy football today, I think one of the first years I ever played, I actually had you on my team. Oh, that's great. That means you won. I, you know that what? I actually think I did win won. that league. And the team name was Meet the Falkers. <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. That is a good one. So, Marshall, just being a couple weeks into the NFL season, what teams stick out to you? What teams do you have playing in the big game coming up in February so far? Um, well, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, at, at the beginning of the season, working for um, NFL Network on game day morning, we have to give our picks as the season start. And, and my two teams were the Colts and the Cardinals. Now I'm looking good with the Cardinals, not looking so good with the Colts. Um, if I had to sub a team in, um, it would be easy to put New England in there, but New England, they're playing so good that you know at some point in time, there's going to be like a snafu or you know they're going to lose a playoff game or something's going to happen. But a team that, that intrigues me right now is the Denver Broncos. How do you have the 31st rank offense with Peyton Manning as your quarterback? And now you're giving Peyton Manning the number one defense in the league. There's something going on there. There's something going on there. And I think the offense is going to catch up. The running game is going to catch up. And with that number one rated defense, with Wade Phillips is running, I, I believe that they're on to something in Denver. One of the worst offenses in the league and still undefeated. I'm right there with you. Yes. Now, you brought up the Colts. What's going on with your old team? You spent some time in Indy as well. They're not looking too hot this year. Uh, it's a combination of a makeshift offensive line and Andrew Luck maybe trying to do a little bit too much. And then um, you got a coach on the hot seat, maybe not, maybe a lukewarm seat. And he wants a he wants a longer deal. They only offered him a one year extension, and that's all he's done is take his teams to the playoffs every year that he's been there. Now uh, I I got to disagree with you with Arizona. I know we're up here in Wisconsin, so we're all about the Packers, and they're looking pretty good so far. So I'm gonna. I like your AFC pick, but NFC, I want to disagree with you a bit on. Uh, you, listen, you, you you have grounds <laughs> to disagree with me on it. They have identical records. Yeah. Uh, both quarterbacks are playing phenomenal. Um, it's, you know, I, I think Arizona, they, they have less injuries than, than you guys have. Correct. And at some point in time, you're going to miss a Jordy Nelson. And uh, I saw last night, Devontae Adams, uh, you know, he lift off the field. And a couple of weeks ago, Eddie Lacy went down. You know, uh, Brian Balaga's not playing for you guys right now, but but all in all, you have what I consider the the best quarterback in our league, and Aaron Rodgers, and he can cover up a lot. 
Um, it's going to be interesting to see as they continue to go what happens. But yes, you do have an argument and you can be in that conversation. All right, I will take it. Now, you're here to talk to us a little bit about fantasy football. And a lot of times rookies can be an important part of the fantasy football class. There's some really impressive ones this year. I know myself, I have uh, Amari Cooper on my team. He's really shined. What are some other rookies that have stood out to you? Oh, uh, Amir Abdullah. Uh, I think both of the quarterbacks that went one and two, they, they've played pretty good. They've put up good numbers. Mariota put up pretty good numbers um, against the coach defense. And, and Winston, I'm, I'm starting to see kind of kind of uh, what I thought I was going to see outside of that first game when they went head to head. Um, uh, Melvin Gordon is looking pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see as Todd Gurley gets healthy, the kind of numbers he's going to put up in fantasy football. But, you know, obviously um, the thing that we all want to know is who to sit, who to start. And, and SAP, I'm, I'm here for them. They came out with the player comparison tool. It's a perfect it's a perfect tool to help people whom are struggling in their fantasy football leagues, or better yet, if you're playing good and you want to stay on top, you use this tool to figure out who to sit, who to start. And if you're trying to look for a sleeper, you go on the waiver wire. This tool can help you uh, figure out which one of those players can help you win your league. And that's something I think we're all looking for. I'd love to have fun and hopefully win some money playing those fantasy football leagues. Now, where can our viewers go to get more information about that service? Yeah, if you want information about it, go to NFL.com slash fantasy. And um, this tool is great. It works on all platforms. Fantastic. NFL.com slash fantasy. Check it out. You still have time to win your fantasy football league. Marshall Falk said so. So go there. Check it out. Should be some important stuff and some fun stuff going forward as well. Marshall, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Marshall Falk. Former NFL, or well, current NFL Hall of Famer and current, uh, currently with the NFL Network. We'll be right back with more of the sports news in just a moment. Thank you all for tuning in to Sports News this week. We also want to thank all of our guests for stopping by and letting us know some of the great things that are going on here in and around Madison when it comes to sports. Keep in mind the Madison Bowl or the City Championship is coming up this Friday night at Bree Stevens Field, Madison La Follette facing Madison East. You can tweet me directly using at Ash41 or tweet this show using the hashtag TSNCW57. Till next time, I'm Ryan Ash for the Sports News, getting you in the game.